Hi everyone, and welcome to Censure Touch Essentials on Tuts Plus Premium. As always, before we invest time and resources into learning a new framework, it's important to understand if it is really the right choice for us and our projects. So, for this first lesson, we're going to take a close look at Censure Touch 2. We're going to find out what it is, what it can do, and explore some of the key concepts before jumping in. Before we get started, I'd like to quickly discuss some of the prerequisites you'll need to partake in this course. If you are a beginner at JavaScript, I'd highly recommend doing a few other tutorials first. On NetTuts Plus, you can find a lot of useful tutorials in JavaScript. I would suggest looking up Prototypes in JavaScript and the Key Principles of Maintainable JavaScript. The first deals with object-oriented JavaScript using prototypes, and the second will help us understand namespaces, design patterns and practices, and documentation and file minification, which is used extensively in Censure Touch. It will also be a help to get acquainted with JSON for storing data. Censure Touch is probably perfect for intermediate users of JavaScript. You'll have enough knowledge to jump right in, but have not developed any preconceived notions about how things should work. You'll have to be attentive and open-minded. Which brings us to the experts. Censure Touch is a pretty bossy framework, and if you don't do things Censure's way, it'll only make things difficult. The best advice I can give is that before we do anything, we find out how Censure wants us to do it, and try to follow Censure's design patterns. Even with the simple things, you'll often find that Censure will have a specific way of doing it that will already be optimised to work with the Censure framework. So, what is it exactly? Censure Touch is a HTML5 based mobile app development framework. So what separates it from other frameworks such as jQuery Mobile? Unlike jQuery Mobile, Censure Touch makes almost no use of the actual HTML files. You'll be doing all of your development in JavaScript. From within JavaScript, we'll have access to over 50 built-in components. We'll be able to leverage the very complex and feature-rich class system of XJS and keep our projects organized using an MVC methodology. Don't worry if you don't understand some of these concepts at the moment, we'll be looking into them in depth later. So let's check out the app gallery to see some examples of Censure Touch applications. First I'm going to take a look at a Realty application by Houston Association of Realtors. As you can see, we can see in action here many of the components that come straight out of the box with Censure Touch. We have title bars, tabbed buttons, uh, an overlay with a list view, a search bar, we obviously have the primary map here in the background. What you'll also notice if you search through the app gallery is that many applications will have support for multiple sizes. Here we can see the exact same application but viewed through a telephone. Censure Touch 2 recently added a very comprehensive graphing feature. This stock market application is a good example of that graphing in action. As you can see we have the tab bar down below and some very complex graphing capabilities. For something a little different, let's have a look at the Discover Music application. This one, as you can see, is actually sponsored by Censure Touch. As you can see, all of the applications draw from the same set of components, but with a bit of creativity, we can still give our application a customized touch. For a more comprehensive look at what we can do, let's go to Products, Demos, and check out the Kitchen Sink. From here we can check out all of the different user interface components. Buttons, Forms, with sliders and toolbars, List Views,
with an optional disclosure icon on the side. We can have nested lists. There are a lot of icons. Shown here is only a fraction of the, of the icons available. We have toolbars with different types of buttons that can be integrated into them. Carousel. Tabs. Above. And below. And all sorts of different overlay elements. We can have an action sheet where the user has to choose an option. A plain overlay. An alert. Prompt confirm box and the classic picker. We have many different types of transition animations. Fades, cover, slide, pop and even flip. Censure Touch also gives us access to an incredibly comprehensive range of different touch events including double touch, drag, swipe, and other gestures. We can read data in a variety of different ways, including Ajax. We can play video and audio. And using the graphs, we can create a whole range of different charts. So, we've seen the kitchen sink, and we've seen a few example applications. One thing that can be said is that while Censure Touch gives us a lot of different components and does a lot of work for us in creating a user interface, many of the applications did have a similar look and feel. This is something you should be prepared for. If you have a user experience that is very customized, maybe Censure Touch is not the right way to go. If, however, you do decide that Censure Touch is perfect for your applications, we're going to need to get to know the documentation pretty well. Welcome to the Censure Touch 2 docs. You're probably going to want to have these open at all times while developing. In the top left corner, we have five tabs. The first is the complete API documentation. Any of these can be accessed by making a search. So if we type in list and hit enter, it'll bring up the documentation for list, seen here. Each item in the API will have a list of configuration parameters, properties, methods, events, this is, these are the events that the list can fire, and CSS variables and mix-ins. These will be important when we're making use of Censure's very powerful theming capabilities later on. We also have a tab for guides. This can be very useful for getting started. And there is a guide on just about every concept and component in Censure Touch. We also have videos and examples. Censure Touch, while being open source, also for commercial projects, is technically backed by a commercial entity. This explains why the documentation is so thorough and well thought out. Even though it's very good documentation, it can be a bit confusing to get used to at first. We'll be beginning from the documentation with just about everything we do. Finally, before we go, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of key concepts that Censure Touch uses. This way, when they come up during the later lessons, we'll already have a bit of an idea of what we're talking about. As I said before, Censure Touch makes almost no use of HTML coding. Obviously, Censure Touch builds everything in HTML, but you don't actually have to touch any of it. In fact, you shouldn't. Here is an example of the one and only HTML file that will be contained within a Censure Touch project, which calls a special Censure Touch loading script. However, if we have a look at the rest of the project, we have an app.js file and many other files broken up into controllers, models, profile, stores, and views. We'll be looking into the project folder structure later in the next lesson. For now, it's important to understand that 
we shouldn't be touching a, the raw HTML code. In fact, even from within JavaScript, we shouldn't be manipulating it directly. We should always be using the Sensor Touch framework to do so. Now you will notice that the files are broken up into controller, model, and view. This is because Sensor Touch makes use of the MVC methodology for development. We'll be taking a more detailed look at this later, but for now I'd like to quickly give you an idea of what it is. Put simply, it is just a way of separating our code into more manageable chunks. We have the view, which contains the user interface and fires off user interface events. The controller, which manipulates the data contained in the model, which up updates the view. We'll take a more in-depth look into this in the next lesson when we create our first project. Another concept that Censure uses heavily is that of SAS. SAS is just another way of writing style sheets so that you can use variables and functions within your style sheets. Rather than writing out the color in every single instance where you want to use a color, you can define a variable of your color and write it directly into the style sheet. This obviously means that your style sheets will have to be compiled and then they get converted into CSS. We'll be looking into this in detail when we explore theming of Sensor Touch applications. Another concept to get used to is that we're going to be using the command line. Sensor command allows us to build our application, minifying it all into as few files and as small a file size as possible. This does mean we're going to have to use the command line. But don't worry, we won't have to use it much, and it's just a handful of different commands we'll have to learn. Well, that's all for our introduction to Sensor Touch. In the next lesson, we're going to be setting up our development environment, creating our first project, and taking a closer look at Censure Touch's implementation of the MVC methodology. Ciao!